Picture the scenario. You create a brand new model behavior. You're quite impressed with yourself. You decide you want to test it out. So you drag and drop it onto the hierarchy only to be denied by the Unity security system. But if you create a brand new game object, the inspector will accept that model behavior wholeheartedly. You see, in this video, I'm going to show you how to combat this hierarchical denial. And I'm going to show you some extra tips applicable elsewhere in Unity along the way. Okay, so in all seriousness, this isn't the most glamorous or even the most useful of tools for creating game objects when, you know, creation of automation scripts exist and prefabs, etc. However, I do find myself using it every now and again, so I figured why not share it? And the techniques that are involved in this can be utilized elsewhere in Unity, so make sure to let them all sink in. So let's jump straight into the code. And somebody complained recently that my videos are too advanced, and to that I say, prepare for more of the same, but do let me know in the comments if you would prefer I make a Flappy Bird tutorial. I'm not going to make one, I'll just ignore it, but the YouTube algorithm does like comments. Anyway, I have created a script under the editor folder and named it hierarchy script drop handler because that's what it will do. Now I'm going to add the attribute initialize on load to the class, which will tell Unity to initialize this script by running the static constructor when Unity is loaded or the code is recompiled. So under this new constructor, I will be adding a drop handler. Now we do this by using the static method on the drag and drop class called add drop handler and passing it a method. Now, depending upon the parameters for this method passed, we will influence the corresponding window this will be added to as a new behavior. I've linked the API documentation in the description, which can help guide you if you want to override a different window, not the hierarchy. But for us and the hierarchy window, our static method we will call will be of the format of hierarchy drop handler, which takes an int for the ID, hierarchy drop flags, a transform for the parent, and a boolean as to whether the drag perform action is actually happening. So into the method. The first thing we want to do is make sure we have a monoscript. Now I'm going to copy and paste the method here as it's fairly straightforward. We simply go through the object references for the drag being performed and make sure it's a script and that that script is derived from a mono behavior. After all, there's no point in dragging if it's not actually a mono behavior. Back to the first method. And now we know we have a relevant script. We want to check our perform flag to make sure we're actually dropping that script. Now I've shown creation and renaming of a game object before in the advanced game object creation video. So let's just copy and paste this code here. We create a game object, check for any parenting. We make it the selected game object. We register it with the undo. Then we call the editor application delay call and we'll send a window event called rename to rename after its creation. I will leave a link to the advanced object creation video in the description. Go check it out after this one for more details. So we have our game object and we can now add a component. To do that, we use our monoscript to get the class from it and we pop that into the add component. Now comes an important final step. So make sure not to skip this one. If all the conditions were correct, like this being a mono behavior that we are dropping, we return drag and drop visual mode copy to tell Unity that we have controlled the drag and drop. Now we do this outside of perform. Why do we do this outside? Well, this method will run as soon as we drag onto the hierarchy window. And we want Unity to know we can accept this asset type. Otherwise, you'll get the icon saying this is an invalid operation. Now, if we don't have a valid mono behavior, we want Unity to deal with the asset. And to do that, we finish with drag and drop visual mode, none. This means Unity will go on to check the next handler. Okay, let's jump over into our beautiful scene in Unity. This time around, I have the new modular castle and dungeon by my friends over at Nature Manufacturer, which is on sale as of the recording of this video. It's in the new release category. I will leave a link in the description, so make sure to go and check it out and send them some love. Now, we take our script and we drag it across and hey presto, we have our new component in a brand new game object. On top of that, we can immediately rename it and even undo it. It just proves that game development is so much better when you have good tooling. 